Elastics is a very confusing topic in orthodontics because many doctors doesn't know how to change the direction of the elastics and how to use it effectively for correction of class 1, class 2, class 3 or midline discrepancy or use it as a reciprocal entry. So we have tried to summarize everything in this 15 minutes. able to understand about multiple things like how to choose elastics which elastics now what are the multiple uses of the elastics and skeletal correction and the dental correction usually we are able to do only dental corrections which we should use very judiciously occlusal settling is routinely done by the elastics and midline correction usually occurs due to anchorage loss i have seen multiple cases in that in those cases how do we use elastics and lingually and buckly tilted posteriors are best corrected by reciprocal anchorage and the elastics so why we should use elastics very cautiously, very carefully. And what is the force decay? It may cause the occlusal canting and what are the multiple side effects of the elastics. So we'll learn everything in the present video. So basically according to the use, there are two types of elastics, extraoral and intraoral. In the extraoral, basically the force level is very high. The force which is used for orthopedic corrections like for the protraction of the maxilla 14 ounce elastics force is used to bring the maxilla forward by the face mask interoral elastics for settling the occlusion we may use it so light forces are used so ac accordingly the classification has been made to simplify things like light medium heavy extra heavy elastics depending upon the forces which are used in by the elastics so basically the 200 gram forces approximately 200 or 200 gram plus forces is considered as the orthopedic we should use only light forces intraorally the dimension the most common intraoral elastic which is used is 3 by 16 5 by 16 and 3 by 8 inches according to the uh, point of insertion and uh, point of origin of the elastic like from canine to molars if you want to use then we may stick to 5 by 16 or 3 by 8 inches elastics these are for extraoral elastics like uh, and right apart from the extraoral elastics we uh, currently give the bone plates for the class C correction is the contemporary things in which we give the uh, bone uh, bone plate supported intraoral heavy elastics also so you may check it this is also the contemporary thing so basically depending upon the size also and depending upon the color also so there are multiple colors of the elastics uh, elastics the color may vary but the diameter the size you have to choose accordingly as per your need right so I personally use quite commonly the green elastic, blue elastics, red elastics. So they are quite commonly available for intraoral use here. Class one means like uh, when we just want to retract the end mass retraction or segmental retraction, we take the help of a rubber band or elastic. We engage it from a hook to the molar or any, any tooth to the molar. So this is the class one elastics. Quite frequently, uh, we use uh, elastic chain rather than uh, this intraoral rubber band or elastics. So class 2 elastics is between the upper canine to the molar. Now you, yeah, this is class 2 mechanics when we want to bring this segment backwards and this segment forces forward. But you have to remember multiple things while using class 2 elastics. See, the first of all, is there any space distal to the canine or the entire arch is figure of eight tied so that uh, they move as one segment so it's your decision how you want to use this elastics this elastics has not only the horizontal component but it also has a vertical component so when you divide this into two components this is a horizontal component and a vertical component so you may also change the direction from this canine to second molar also to increase the horizontal component more or you can decrease the horizontal component by making it a short class of elastic from canine to premolar or canine to first molar premolar so you have to but the moment you desire you have to change the direction the position of the elastics on your own and what will it cause the depending upon the horizontal and vertical components it may uh, bring the segment down also backward also and it may move the canine outward also the minor widening of the arch may also occur so you probably you might be knowing that we we are doing only retraction but also and there is deepening of the bite and this slight widening of the arch also occurs with this class 2 elastic so what we can do we can increase the curve of three to avoid the 
deepening of the bite we can add it as per our convenience we can make the entire arch in figure of eight ligature ties so that the arch moves as a whole rather than a one to and widening then may not occur because so we should avoid elastics when the imp is increased when your lower incisors are already proclined please avoid this elastics and short class two elastics we can use from upper tooth to the lower tooth this is basically for settling the occlusion when we have end down molar relation or your molar is one to two millimeter or premolar is one to two premolar uh, mm short from the intercuspation or cat's premolar classification when you want to bring cusp to embrasure relationship again the most important thing when your imp is increased in the non growing or the adult patient because dental proclination deepening of the bite is bound to occur in the vertical growers the extrusion of the molars occurs and again the facial angle the mandible moves down the gonial angle opens opens up and the class 2 dental pattern class 2 skeletal pattern because it basically causes the flaring of the lower incisors your uh, uh, your curvo p is already very high incisors are low already supra erupted so avoid using class 2 elastic unless you have corrected the proclination inclination and curvo p and winding of the arch the arch form you have maintained so elastics basically are used when we have given the when we have done the alignment and when we have achieved the leveling on the heavy wire uh, the elastics are given in which one arch by is the tweets method in which one arch on heavy wire is used as a base and the other arch is capped on the light wire light ss wire like 014 ss or 016 ss which we want to move so there is a play in the lower dimension wire so teeth are more able to move and in the rigid wire teeth are stable so they move less we can also cinch the wire from the back end if we don't want you, our teeth to move anywhere or to prevent the flaring cinching or uh, bending the posterior end of the wire is done to prevent the flaring of undesirable proclination right so class 3 elastics basically from the molar to the lower canine this is the long class 3 elastics this is the long class 3 elastics for increased horizontal effect probably you might have understood all this time that if we put this elastic from first molar to the second molar then it will increase the horizontal component so if you want to do, uh, stretch it more if you want to give the more horizontal component then we should give the uh, as posterior as possible if you want to move the it vertically upwards then we can keep it short class three elastic then vertical component will also be there right so advanced advanced maxillary dentition it causes the forward movement of the maxillary dentition and backward movement of the mandibular dentition the midline elastics many people ask me this question so midline has deviated what to do now so you have to know which segment has moved which uh, you have to check the molar relation the intercuspation by checking the intercuspation the side which is not in proper occlusion then start this elastics on that side in an oblique manner again if you if your lower arch is perfect then keep it on rectangular heavy wire keep light wire on the mandible arch and then give this cross elastics or you can keep the wire dimension as per your convenience if you want to move the both arches or if you want to keep the upper arch stable right so it is done used to correct the midline dental discrepancies during finishing or space closure yes they are very effective and then the correction by uh, the cross elastics inter arch elastics from upper molar to the lower molar like we can use if you want to move this molar outward then this is the best possible combination and uh, if you want the if there is an impacted canine or the molar is high you want to bring this down keep this segment on the heavy wire this on the light wire and give the elastics so it's kind of reciprocal elastics it's very effective and it gives good results also and when we have to elastic we have to elastic 24 hours a day we have to take it out while chewing and eating if you are able to eat then okay you may eat with the elastics also because our mouth functions best while chewing so if you are able to wear your elastic while chewing then that is the best it's very good then the box shape elastics which are which we use to increase the intercuspation and to settle the posterior occlusion then we can make configuration as per our need right so 
if you don't have such hooks then you can twist kobayashi hooks and or you can make some kind of hooks by ligature wire to engage these elastics this configuration is used when we have open bite and this is quite frequently used this is short kind of short class 2 elastics which have a class 2 component of the force and we want to settle this segments to increase the intercuspation and this is has a class 3 component this segment is forward this segment is backward so direction is decided by the operator as per the intercuspation desired vertical elastics are basically used in open bite cases again in open bite cases whether it's skeletal or dental you have to make sure what exactly it is and then you should start basically extruding the anteriors and then again you have to keep in mind which wires are you gonna use to close this open bite and the duration frequency and you can change the dimension of the elastics you can change your mechanotherapy prescription as per the response you get from the patient in upcoming visits so everything should be monitored carefully by the clinician profit stated that it simply must be kept in mind that when last two months are used force decay is very rapid so it's not a continuous force it's an interrupted force you have to change the elastics so the relaxation occurs in the first three to five hours after extension regardless of the size of the size or the manufacturer's recommendation therefore elastic should be replaced every day for optimal force delivery right and each chain there are three types of elastic chains are there again they are double-edged sword if the space is already closed they are still they are present they will cause the crowding and if in intra-arch inter-arch you have given something it's the correction has occurred there is no space the flaring occurs or the deep biting bite may occur deep so choose elastic chain again very carefully you don't have to stretch it as much as possible it's not the rule that you have to put every hole of the elastics in every bracket slot right you don't have to engage the entire bracket with the hole of the e chain there is no such rule everything is used as per the treatment or the movement desire right so the most important crux of the elastomers and the elastics is that initially the force delivery may vary and the force decay force decay occurs rapidly 50 to 75 percent occurs in the first 24 hours the greater amount of force greatest amount of force occurs in the first three hours after 24 hours 74 percent of the loss that's why we have to use the elastics we have to change the elastics every day right and uh, if you don't want to uh, if you want to give e chain elastic chain or if you want to use the elastic my recommendation is just please stretch it nearly five to ten percent more just you have elastic hold it stretch it keep it stressed for five seconds and then use it you will notice that the pre-stretching pre-stretching increase the efficiency of the elastic so i hope you like the lecture and we have tried to summarize everything about the elastics which is not given in books in 15 minutes or so if you have any doubt related to orthodontics or biomechanics or anything you want to understand then leave a message thank you